Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Expro India Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Baskar, Managing Director and CEO. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, friends. I, extended, I extend a very warm welcome to all participants in this Q4 and FI24 earnings call. I introduce myself once again as C. Bhaskar, Managing Director and CEO of Expro India Limited. Today on this call, I have with me Mr. Vinay Kumar Agarwal, our Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Kamal Sevda, our Company Secretary, and Mr. Shobit uh, from our uh, Finance Department. I am particularly happy to have the attendance of our Chairman, Mr. Siddharth Birla, who, while not participating, wishes to hear your views and our interactions firsthand. Orient Capital, our Investment Relations Partner, is as always coordinating this session. We are continuing the practice started a couple of years ago of hosting this annual conference call for our investor community with the intent of keeping investors and analysts familiar with and update about our annual results and major developments. I have had opportunity to meet some of you at earlier calls or at the AGM or otherwise. So I shall not dwell on introducing our company. We are transparent in our approach, but I must state that all discussions here will be within boundaries reasonably imposed by our strategic and competitive position, and of course legal requirements where applicable. As you are all aware, Expro India Limited is a diversified, multi-locational company focused on polymer processing with, a strong, with very strong governance standards. The company is family-led and is a professionally managed arm of India's largest and reputed industrial house, the, Birla, the Birlas. We currently have manufacturing facilities at Greater Noida in UP, Ranjangao in Maharashtra, and Barjora in West Bengal. Our operating units have built up special skills and competencies in the specialized field of co-extrusion with application in the manufacture of oriented films, multi-layer plastic sheets, and multi-layer cast plastic films. Thermoforming supports downstream processes for sheets. Our results for FI 23-24, together with quarterly results, have been uploaded on stock exchange portals and you have, may have had an opportunity to go through the press release and presentation that we have uploaded to the exchange sites and on our own website. Coming to a quick review of key business matters. India, the world's fastest growing large country, is expanding annually at 6 to 7 percent. Private sector confidence is reportedly at its highest since 2010. Resilience in manufacturing, massive infrastructure spend, a respectable agricultural output, increasing direct and indirect tax collections, and strong foreign exchange reserves all portend well for sustained growth. Improvements to infrastructure and logistical costs can be expected. Job creation remains an urgent priority. Of course, the usual overall risks, including but not limited to policy and monetary policy changes, geopolitics, inflation, and climate will always remain. However, recent reports do indicate there are expectations of a good monsoon, signs of a pickup in rural demand, and slowing inflation. There could be a durable, broad-based improvement in consumption. Coming to our own performance during Q4 and 2023-24, I am happy to state that the company continued to deliver a strong performance 
reflecting our manufacturing and marketing capabilities and our strong track record as a key supplier in both the white goods and dielectric segments. The Barjora dielectric film line maintained its dynamic performance, operating at almost full capacity and consistently adapting to produce thinner films. This helped align our product mix and capabilities with current opportunities with our clients. Enhancements were made to the thickness measurement and control systems, necessitating a brief planned downtime time as we have discussed earlier also. We believe that favorable market conditions will continue to support our operations. The company holds the pole position as the leading and first mover Indian manufacturer of premium dielectric BOPP films and is recognized in advanced markets for product quality, innovation, and service standards. We have cultivated our own development capabilities and compete on strong terms against products from manufacturers even in places like Japan, Korea, China, and Europe. Due to the need to align capacity with domestic demand, we have had to temporarily moderate exports. The sectors of electric vehicles, EVs, and alternative energy are promising for our company's range of competencies. Consumer durables, including refrigerators, manufactured by our OEM customers, key client base for co-extruded sheets and thermoform liners, manufactured at our Ranjangaon and Greater Noida units, faced difficult market conditions during the first half of the year, as would have been seen in the quarterly results. The offtakes for consumer durables saw a limited revival in the third quarter uh, and onwards, in anticipation of, a, of the festival season and recovery. The white goods markets improved to some extent towards year end, and one may expect revitalized demand in coming periods. But competitive demands on our kinds and products frequently translates to pressure on our pricing. The government's PLI scheme has likely tempted some refrigerator manufacturers to create sheet capacity for a part of their requirements. Nevertheless, our flexibility with multiple lines, skills, and track record built up over years and our focus on reliability and operational efficiency means most leading brands remain our notable clients. Now considering the Q4 performance, revenue from operations was rupees 128.41 crores against rupees 124.27 crores in Q4 FI23, registering a small growth of about 3% on a year-on-year -year basis. Production volumes themselves were almost 20% higher at 7,964 tons, while sale vol sales volumes, or actual physical dispatch volumes, were 9% higher at 7047 MT against 6454 in the corresponding period last year. Further material valued at about rupees 1.4 crores was in transit due to Red Sea related shipping delays and accordingly was not included in sales as per applicable accounting standards. EBITDA of the dielectric film segment as well as that of the co extruded sheets and cast film segments, improved in Q4 on a YOY basis. However, the overall EBITDA fell from 15% to 13% on a Q4 YOY basis in view of the higher share of co extruded sheets like films business in that quarter. EBT in the overall was higher by 8.5% at 16.52 quarters uh, crores for the quarter, including of other income. We continue to see sustained domestic demand for Expros Biax dielectric films with our market share still at over 30%, with the balance being substantially met through imports. The hot summers that we are now experiencing have also contributed to a healthy outlook 
for the consumer durables business with refrigerator manufacturers looking to revitalize and strong demand. Now coming to the full year FY24 performance. Our performance continues to reflect the overall climate in our markets, the impact of strategic steps taken during the last few years, and our position as a key supplier to the growing white goods and dielectric segments. Aggregate production during the year grew by 4.8% to 27,891 tons against 26,607 uh, tons last year, excluding toll manufacture from the erstwhile unit which we discontinued in the previous year. Overall sales value, however, was lower by 8.9% at rupees 465.41 crores. The fall in sales value reflects the net impact of the lower polymer prices prevailing through much of the year, discontinuation of toll manufacture at the erstwhile packaging film unit following completion of transfer in October 22, uh, which had a, a meant a reduction of 5 crores in, in, in the sales value, export consignment of approximately rupees 1.144 crores, as I mentioned earlier, being still on high seas due to extended sailing times on account of the Red Sea situation. In this background, the sales of dielectric films were rupees 145.89 crores against rupees 156 crores previous year. Co-extruded sheets and liners were at 255.64 crores. And the cast co-extruded film sales were at 59.38 crores against 53 crores in the previous year. Other operating income was at rupees 4.5 crores against rupees 4 crores in the previous year. Production costs were controlled with productivity enhancements. And together, they contributed to an operational PBIDT of rupees 66.1 crores against rupees 74.4 crores in the previous year, with the EBITDA margin being maintained at fairly similar levels, but, uh, with the level being at 14.2% in the year against 14.5% in the previous year. Overall, PBIDT, including other income, was at rupees 78.33 crores, very, very marginally higher than that of the previous year when it was rupees 78.28 crores. Continuing to reduce term loans for existing operations during the year, we, re we, repaid, we prepaid rupees 15.31 crores of outstanding working capital term loans under the guaranteed emergency credit line government guaranteed schemes, which were actually repaid well before schedule. There are now no outstanding term borrowing for existing operations and accordingly no repayment liabilities in the current year. Interest and other finance costs were also accordingly lower at rupees 5 crores against rupees 7.5 crores in the previous year. Profit before exceptional items and tax was rupees 62.18 crores against rupees 59.23 crores in the previous years. We had an exceptional item of rupees 2.02 crores being a right to recompense exercised by our consortium bankers pertaining to a commitment of uh, 2016, notwithstanding our demonstrated creditable performance on prepayment of outstanding borrowings over the last few years. Accordingly, profit before tax was rupees 60.16 crores against rupees 59.23 crores in the previous year. Global recognition for export products remains strong. Exports of dielectric films, however, were curtailed due to capacity constraints, while the exports of other extruded sheets and films were significantly higher 
bringing total exports to rupees 13.4 crores against rupees 17.4 crores in the previous year. Net debt to equity stood at 0 0.07 times and delivered a healthy ROE of 17.5% on, on the capital utilized through much of the year and 11.5% on the expanded capital at the end of the year. Uh, it is material that we look at the, uh, on the capital actually utilized through much of the year because the enhancement in capital happened only in March. The ROCE on, ROCE on, uh, uh, um, on the expanded capital was about, 10, was about 11 percent, whereas it was around 25 percent in the case of uh, the, the original capital, which was utilized through much of the year. The board has recommended a dividend of rupees 2 per equity share on the expanded capital of the company. Some other important developments include in July 23, Malabar India Fund exercised their full entitlement for the warrants they held and accordingly 24.6 lakh shares including bonus shares were allotted to them as per their entitlement. Further capital raises were announced in the year under review to help support our strategic vision of building global significance in the dielectric films industry. We were delighted to receive shareholder approvals at the EGM held on January 16, 2024 for raising up to 140 crores via warrants issued on a preferential basis and up to 150 crores via qualified institutions placement. We are pleased that the company's offerings triggered keen interest from reputable, informed and judicious investors and in a very short time, the company could complete both offerings by issuing and allotting during the year. Total capital, capital raised during the year was approximately rupees 290 crores. Let me now update you on the capacity additions in progress. I think many of you are waiting to hear this actually. The first phase of expansion to double capacity at the existing location at Barjora is well underway. Significant progress has been made on implementation at the Brownfield site and management believes that we are on track to achieve operations in the current year as announced earlier. While the possibility that European supply chain issues may delay the arrival of some equipment and this fact cannot be fully ruled out, but at the present moment, any significant delay in the broad timeline announced is not evident. As per our earlier announcements, the second new line was to be set up at another appropriate location. After a careful study of relevant factors and as a step towards enlarging our successful footprint in the dielectric film industry's global supply chain, our board has approved the setting up of a subsidiary in the United Arab Emirates. A wholly owned subsidiary is being incorporated as a limited liability company in the free trade zone in the Emirate of Ras al Khaima within the United Arab Emirates. Core equipment is already on order and work on the ground will begin shortly so as to align with our articulated intent of starting operations there in the financial year 202526. These new lines each represent the largest investment, investments undertaken by the company. The expansion is expected to enhance our domestic first mover advantage besides helping achieve a globally worthy capacity and market standing and even greater credibility as a supplier of state-of-the-art dielectric film products and intelligent solutions. <clears throat> Furthering our sustainability initiatives and in accordance with the agreement with, uh, with the Tata Power Group, the company acquired 26% of the equity capital and rights thereof in TP Mercury Limited 
for rupees 1.36 crore, 1.35 crores. The installation of generation equipment of solar uh, uh, power generation equipment is approximately 90% complete. Tata Power has communicated some delays in transmission system. However, we anticipate that the supply of low, lower cost solar energy through open access to the company's Ranjangao unit would commence well before December this year. With this, I open the floor to any questions and answers. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Pranay Roop Chatterjee from Burman Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, uh, I have two main questions with respect to dielectric films, uh, both of which, which which pertain to the overall market and your strategy. Right. Uh, firstly, before I get into that, uh, could you could you disclose how much of your production in dielectric films is actually in the six to seven micron range or thereabouts? Is it possible to disclose that? Uh, Pranay, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, point number one: the exact uh, gauge distribution is something that you will appreciate is, uh, is, is almost a trade secret. So honestly speaking, I would not like to disclose the exact distribution. However, that said, let me tell you that in India today, modal consumption, and I'm using the word modal very generically, is right. in the 6, 7, 8 micron thickness. Right. Does that sort of answer your question? Yes, that, that, that answers my question and also helps me move into my next question. So I was trying to understand uh, how the, you know, in the overall market and primarily the data I've used is import data. I've tried to understand two things. Uh, one is uh, at all art films getting thinner uh, over the years, number one. Number two, uh, are, how, how, how are the different film ranges in terms of thickness, how are they priced and then uh, thirdly and lastly, uh, who are these guys uh, who are exporting to India and just categorizing them into two categories, Chinese and non-Chinese. So what I observed was uh, the weighted average thickness, if there is any sense in that word, uh, which is simply weighted by the quantity in tons imported and then the micron thickness is actually very, very steady at six and a half microns uh, for the last 10 years. And uh, if I look at the sub three micron range, I'm not even talking sub two, sub three microns, uh, there the market seems to be very, very, very small, right? Uh, so I'm just trying to think, this is the line we have installed in India and which would start soon. What thickness range exactly are you targeting and what blended realizations do you see for the new line, you know, vis-a-vis -vis your existing line? Okay, let me answer your last question first. Uh, you will again appreciate that the blended realization on plans are a subject for a call, right? right. Uh, but having said that, let me tell you two things. One, when we talk about a line capability, it talks about a range capability. So these new lines will have a capability, let's say two micron upwards, against the, against the higher range in the existing lines. Right. So it gives us the capability to meet a wider range of the market requirements, point one. Point number two, much of the import data that you see, since we also keep monitoring it, is actually a, is, is actually a large assemblage of numbers where it's rather difficult to extract too much data from because when you talk of a dielectric film in import or a capacitor film import, you will find they don't really always distinguish between a metallized film and a plain film. So when you look at this number, you will see sometimes the price variances are dramatic. And that is because it could be metallized or it could be not metallized. It could be uh, high heat uh, uh, resistant and different types of films. All I'm trying to say is that though that data would need a lot more careful analysis. Correct. Thirdly, more important, 
the trend globally is towards thinner films thinner films are applicability and application is going up it's definitely increasing and it is going it will become more and more as we go more towards the evs and towards the uh, things like the solar segment that said indian consumers have not yet jumped in a big way because of the uncertain availability yet or the lack of availability from a domestic source of thinner films with the availability of thinner films they would change when there is more certain availability remember one such spec is changed for their product and for their end user product then the supply has to be consistent and that is one reason why this change will take time i am not saying it will take a very long time but it will certainly take months now having said that when we start our new lines of course we will start at the model range and then move downwards so the lines will deliver market requirement these are not standard products produced and stocked and sold they are produced against confirmed requirements designed in consultation with the customers so there is that one requirement also let me tell you there is a pretty strong export demand which also we intend uh we are already doing it we've been constrained dramatically during this year by capacity but the the uh, inquiry and the serious intent is very very strong to export to the western world i don't see think we'll export too much to southeast asia or the far east because of china as you yourself said uh, so that is uh, a summary i i think i've answered most of your questions got it so that 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 is a brilliant answer indeed uh, my last question is on competition uh, and this also alludes to that i broke up the market into uh, chinese and non chinese and what i noticed was uh, on an average basis uh, every year uh, of the last 10 years the chinese was chinese guys were at least 20% cheaper uh, than the non chinese guys and in the latest fiscal year uh, both of them were in the range of 500 to 600 per kilo now obviously uh, metalized other characteristics you were right uh, there is a possibility that that is muddling the numbers but the point is that uh, i'm trying to understand who will you replace right uh, let's say the first time the line starts day one week one month one whose demand okay. are you taking away is it the chinese yeah, or what your answer remember stage one india is today importing approximately 70% of its requirement of what we call base films there are other types of films which are different which also will be offered for for the same application or similar application but when i come to the fact that the first thing that we will target is this uh, percent which is being imported into india of course when i say first thing is other than the export now within this yes there is chinese material there are indian players trying to trying to play the game certainly there and, and it's it's not correct to assume that dielectric film is a single product there are a number of specs there are a number of applications each one requiring different formulation different specs most importantly different rigor of application now we would work towards substituting only at the upper end of that band not at the lower band so i would be happy if a chinese product continues to cater to the lower end of the market because it actually leaves me free uh, capacity free to to meet the uh, the higher value added ends now that some of it you would have seen through the price differences yes i know we are more expensive than chinese film but then i guess if you offer a engineered product with a guaranteed uh, okay when i say guarantee i don't mean a physical guarantee but with a moral moral guarantee for performance you have to be higher price right or you deserve to be higher price i'm sure you will agree got it sir thanks for answering my questions i'll get back to the queue all the best thank you pranay thank you thank you we have the next question on the line of romil jain from electrum tms please go ahead Yeah. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are perfectly well, Mr. Roman. Uh, uh, first question is, uh, if you can throw uh, some more details on uh, on on you know whether we uh, 
see the capacity uh, coming up in let's say q or q1 or uh, you know more from a quarter angle which quarter do we concentrate focus more on uh, that is question uh, you know one uh, second is uh, uh, we do not see more of a cwip or uh, any advances that you would have given for uh, uh this uh, this capex so when we would we start uh, you know seeing some some kind of uh, capex there uh, or numbers in the balance sheet uh, and third question is uh, in terms of uh, capacity building uh, i'm just trying to uh, understand uh, globally what kind of capacities are coming up because if if uh, if you know you give order today and it takes 3 to 4 years for the order to come uh, whether uh it is difficult to manufacture at the manufacturer level or there are they are also having more orders globally and hence it is taking more time uh, so yeah i mean these are the three questions uh okay uh thank you romil uh, somehow i noted down two questions but if if i leave out something feel free sure, to interject you know yeah yeah how oh, your first question was in which quarter do we start uh yeah. we have all along maintained that we will be operational for the definitely for the second and thir- uh, for the third and fourth quarters of this year which i mean is the second half uh, our in our current reckoning we don't see any change on that we should be operational definitely in the third quarter of the current fiscal okay i trust that answers your first question yeah ha Okay your second question was regarding CWIP one reason you are not seeing very much of CWIP is is simply because uh, uh, some of some of it would be in capital advance for new plant not necessarily as seed capital work in progress because some of it is also is a capital advance so that's two uh, point uh, number sir, three the number on that how much would be uh, there one, sitting there so can i tell you the third one which is the most significant one yeah, is yeah. that if i take the key lines the key lines are 85% funded by uh, 85% of their costs are actually funded by supplier uh, credit in the nature of an ecb right so which are things like hamas back which are insurance back so those actually trigger in later so you will find at one point there will be a single massive entry which will add to it when that payment is made out okay so these are the reasons why you are not seeing that but but uh, suffice it to say the payments are galloping now so because we are we are at the tail end or almost at the tail end of uh, the project of the first project at least so naturally you will see payments galloping every month at this point of time so probably when you see the june quarter results wherever you will see much more would have been already been paid out okay okay got it yeah uh, the third question was on the uh, capacity built up by the global players why uh, so if it takes okay. 3 to 4 uh, years yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, i i i mentioned i missed the, the third question so right yeah. so uh, on that let me tell you there there are very few very very few in fact good quality or capable people to produce lines even for simple by actually oriented materials whether it is polypropylene or polyester now within this the bulk of the market is actually for packaging where the volumes are humongous compared to the volumes we talk about for um, capacitor films okay. so those manufacturers there are really very few um i mean i don't want to advertise somebody but there is some who's very good there's some who's good and that's about it and um, so you will find that they are bogged down by packaging film line orders substantially even though packaging film market today looks dicey when you look at the indian situation but tremendous capacity expansion continues in that segment and which is why there is a very long delivery period but having said long delivery period just buying a machine does not give you the skill or the capability to produce a good dielectric films you know it, it, it it's not like you buy a blender you are not going to be a good cook and uh, well at least i'm not going to be a good cook just because i bought a blender right so you need to know how to use that and turn out a good dish 
which is exactly the situation we will hear in the case of making a good high tech product, especially for the value add business. Surely there will be competition, and as a principle, we encourage competition, but uh, that makes life more challenging and fun. Having said that, having said that, let me tell you, Romil, again, that once the Barjora expansion and the new line at the RAK goes in, we will, we, okay, let me, let me divert for one moment. We are already considered quality, product, uh, innovation, development, among the top handful of companies, and I mean one handful of companies in the globe. Where we take a uh, hit is on capacity. Now, once we have these two lines in, we will be among the top handful, even in terms of capacity, in a non-China world. Now, fortunately or otherwise, there is definitely a China plus one philosophy which is all over the world. Plus, our focus is always going to be on the upper end of the applications and the upper end of the films rather than the commodities. Uh, you know, as you might have heard me earlier, a capacitor is there in your fan, bottom end. It's hardly a rigorous application. But that's also a capacitor film, also important into the country, because at the end of the day, only 33% uh, is available domestically. I don't want to be in that business of a simple bottom end film. <laughs> you know, it goes all the way up. I would rather do a locomotive or, 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 or a capacitor for an EV, which is, uh, which is where the challenge lies. Uh, does that sort of answer your capacity, your question, Roman? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, just a clarification. So that means globally, uh, not a lot of capacity is coming up in the dielectric film in in which we are expanding, right? That's uh, that's not it. a lot, not a lot. Okay, okay, got it, sir. Yeah, yeah. There I is capacity, of course. Yeah, I'll tell you something. There are the the point I was trying to make, which I didn't uh, elaborate on, was that there are. Only a handful of good companies in this business. Other than China, which has a proliferation of companies, uh, globally, I, 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 you can probably count on one hand the established companies in this business. And you need to be rigorous, again, as I was explaining to Pranay earlier, even a, 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 a company which buys base film and metallizes it and sells the metallized product is selling a dielectric film. So you should need to distinguish between a base film manufacturer and a metallizer. You know, for example, uh, a large Indian BOPP firm, a company, has announced that they're getting into dielectric films. But if you, they're actually getting into metallizers, which is good for us because uh, we would certainly tie up with them to sell them base films. Okay, okay, got it. So clear, Romil? Got it, sir. Thank you so much and uh, wish you good luck. Thank you, Romil. Thank you. We have the next issue on the line of Netik from White Oak Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for taking my question. Uh, so, sir, first, if you can help us with the uh, EBITDA split between BIEX and COEX division for this year. Sorry, I missed that. You wanted the? Uh, EBITDA split between the BIEX and COEX division. Interesting. Now, the EBITDA, the range for the uh, dielectric films, as I have said earlier, and I'm sure I certainly I think we've met or uh, earlier, the EBITDA split, EBITDA margin for the dielectric films, I'm not going to go into a very specific number, I'm going to give you a range, remains over 40%. The EBITDA margin for the other business, for the co-extruded sheets and films, is in the range of 5 to 6%, which is where it used to be. So it's sort of at the same level as it, as it was through much of last year. Even for current year, we have earned 5 to 6% margins in our bikes division? Uh, no, sir. You're talking uh, uh, 5 to 6 is the co-extruded films business. Right, and even in the current year, we have earned uh, similar margins. Or current That's year, right. the margins are. In fact, um, if I take Q4, in Q4, as I think I read out, actually, in in Q4, it was a very interesting phenomenon. Both the businesses did a higher EBITDA, but but what happened was the share 
typically the share of our coex business is one th- of the two businesses one third two third as you might recall from earlier right in the fourth quarter the share of the coex actually went up to a little over 70% of i'm not talking ebitda share i'm talking uh, sale value share because of that the ebitda appeared to go down whereas actually both individually the ebitda went up got it and uh, sir it's it it, you know it's just an arithmetical uh, uh, you know quirk that happened actually right uh, and sir if you can call out the volume for uh, bix division for this year the volume for this year just give me a jiffy i'll give you a sharper yeah. number Bikes, not quite. But the 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 bikes dispatches or the bike sales was like in the earlier year very similar. It was three thousand six hundred and something tons. Got it, sir. And sir, if you can also give the capex guidance for uh, FY twenty five and twenty six. we have indicated one thing is what would happen by fi 25 26 for sure the existing line would be commissioned the the barjora expansion would be commissioned and done so the capex would have broadly been incurred now for the, the in the 25 26 we should be working and should be close to or should have commissioned the other line in the uh, in the middle east so that would be another 250 odd crores that we would have invested there through the subsidiary right got it sir and sir and, last and we are we are toying with another line to go into a next level of technology and manufacturing process for the same application but that would be beyond that would be another year or so beyond okay got it sir and sir uh, just to going back to the abidda question so in this year on an absolute level if you compare against fy23 Our EBITDA has declined by 11 odd percent, right? From 740, from 74 crore to about 66 crore. So, if you can just help us understand which division hurt us more in this particular year. Let, 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 let me put it to you this way: If you really look at the EBITDA margin, hmm. it went down from 14.5 ish to 14.2 ish. So, as a right. percentage, it's really not gone down so steeply. right but our re- revenue uh, grew right i mean our revenue decline was lower right when you declined for uh, various reasons which i had uh, mentioned to you right got it no revenue decline had multiple reasons since you asked a question let me give you a sharper answer on that one was raw material prices through much of the year went went down now raw mat- see, my sales went down by 7.8% raw material prices were down circa 11% 0.1 point number 2 if you see the sales decline something like 5 crores came out of the job work we did on the old packaging bopp line which we sold off remember which we had i had mentioned that so that was another 5 crores thanks to the red sea situation i have material worth almost a crore and a half which sailed from india between january and march which is which was on 31st march still on high sea taking much longer accounting standards required that we didn't count that as sale so there are some of these factors of course sale went down but much of it was you remember whether we take in the coex business we are selling prices directly linked to the raw material price and and that you know is two thirds of our business So when the raw material price went down 11%, straight away that would have had a direct impact, and the price would have gone down. Uh, wait, uh, Bhaskar ji, uh, this uh, Dhiraj here, sir, uh, the coex. I understand. If you can, uh, you know, split the EBITDA no, for the full year. Thank you, sir. Kindly come in the queue for follow-up questions. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Participants, I request you kindly restrict your questions to two per participant. Participants are requested to kindly restrict your questions to two per participant. 
We have the next question from the line of Pradyuman Chaudhary from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. My first question is, uh, if you can just uh, give the revenue contribution for COEX and BIAX for the folio FI24. Uh, you want the revenue split? Give me yeah. a fee. Excluding respective other income, which uh, both of the uh, divisions have, uh, shall I just give it to you product-wise because uh, we have a multiple product in this quote, but give me a G fee. Sure. Uh, if the, the dielectric film sales were 146 against 156. The coex she, the sheets and liners, and let me add the film to it, was um, 255 and 60, was 311 against a little, a little bit, against uh, 340. There was another operating income of about four and a half crores against four crores. So, uh, for the buyout division, why was, the, why was there a revenue decline? Sir, at the end of the day, polymer prices determine the selling price. It could be an immediate impact, or it could be an or it could be a formula determined price adjustment for major customers. Now, as I mentioned to you, polymer prices went down approximately 11%, between 10 and 11, and I'm talking about polymer consumption, right? Not, not for stocking or something. So when the consumption went down 11%, we are a fair player. We are an intrinsically fair player, and we work on long term. So our principle is that the prices are adjusted when there are uh, major uh, uh, swings in the raw material prices. Of course, that works both ways. And uh, I think in the, in the petrochemical related business, we have to respect that there will always be price fluctuations depending on various situations, including geopolitics. Understood. Uh, and uh, secondly, on the, uh, yeah, so just like my top of the envelope calculation suggests that we haven't really seen a shift in realizations yet uh, in terms of due to better product mix. Like I'm accounting for this 10% decline. I mean, I'm going to preempt your question, surely in the interest of time, but let me make one thing clear to you that this year I've had a zero capacity addition. In a zero capacity addition, we are, my plant is firefighting all the time to balance customer load. So like it or not, I have to give a range of products to a regular customer from the bottom to the top. I mean, uh, I can't sell a shirt with no button, right? So I have to give a package to many customers. So you, there is no way you can see that till capacity comes in. So my volumes are pegged at available capacity. My mix is determine my value add or high value add to low value add product within the dielectric film uh, framework is determined by the mix that a customer would need. I hope that clarifies your question. Yes, yes, it does. And just uh, one last question. Uh, sorry, two questions. One is, uh, since we are talking about starting production from the new line in Q3 onwards, so uh, have we already received the machine or uh, when exactly is the machine coming? The machine, uh, let me tell you, you know, these kind of equipment are massive numbers of containers, massive number of pieces. I mean, uh, my guess is it would come in in 50 to 60, uh, 40 foot containers. Now, equipment comes in in small bits and yet bits have started arriving at the plant. Okay, fine. And why are we going to the Middle uh, East? Like the operator here, yes. so would kindly area. come back in the queue for follow-up questions. Yeah, that was just the last question, then I'm done. Uh, why are we going to the Middle East instead of setting the capacity in India itself? Okay, there are many reasons. One, we, have, we are very clear that our product, our skills uh, put together deserve a global standing. So we want to be in a place from where, location, from where we can meet the US and European requirements conveniently. 
at the same time if you are in a near a good port in the middle east you are practically in western india if i compare it with say a location like bengal where we are today so we are not losing a locational advantage importantly india and the middle east uh, india and the uae have in place uh, an fta agreement called the sipa which allows free trade across not with sending that i am going to be in a free zone in the in the uae so we are also hedging risks and as you are aware there is a big thrust to this india middle east corridor It's going to be one of the first utilizers or one of the early utilizers of the benefits of that corridor which i think is a near reality now both our end and the middle east are very very seriously working it when i say our end i mean our government are working very seriously at it so we are hedging risks we are going nearer a market we are going to places where in the long term energy should be stable i will not say polymer availability will be easy because this is a special polymer may or may not be available but it's not available in india either and it may it i'm not even sure if it's available easily in the middle east itself all right i hope that if i yes thank you we have the next <laughs> line of manan shah from manibi investment please go ahead yeah hi thanks for the opportunity uh, i wanted to understand why did we go ahead for such a large fundraise because uh, since 80 85% uh, of the capex was going to be via supplier uh, funding supply credit and uh, we had already secured funds uh, uh, in the first round from malabar for for this capex so so what was the need for go to go for such a large fundraise okay uh, let me let me the answer would be very very clear 85% of the ecb supplier credit is uh, supplier credit in the nature of ecb only takes care of the core line now in this business the core line is less than half the total project cost and i emphasize less than half the total project cost uh, there are areas which uh, i have mentioned before that of the plant which for example required extremely high purity inside extremely high uh, highly pure air clean air um, as pure as you would find in an icu all these things add to cost there, there are downstream equipment which are very expensive and because we are handling an extremely thin film even 6 micron is extremely thin huh? let me emphasize that uh, somebody asked me what was the split 6 uh, micron is as difficult to handle as is a very very thin film gets more and more difficult of course so all those equipment are expensive so the idea was that we are not going to be facing any delay or anything in this project implementation for want of funds our cash generation looks strong enough to to have supported it without these raises but nonetheless remember cash generation comes in as each unit starts operation whereas my spend would be earlier so it was a timing that we wanted to capture on and apart from these two we are toying with one more so we thought let's see whether that makes sure that we can cover it all that said we also wanted to make sure that we were done with the raise well before political uncertainties of the election kicked in i mean everybody assumes for gone conclusions but as risk management in the business i have to assume that anything can happen okay understood does that uh, uh, answer you sir Yeah, yeah that answers my question thank you uh, my next question was uh, the lead time uh, from the supplier which you had earlier indicated that at lead time still maintains at those levels or there has been some contraction or elongation in the i'll tell you what there are marginal improvements and i emphasize marginal and why those marginal improvements are there are simple simply because uptake on packaging lines has gone down a little bit or will is going down other than commitment because i'm sure you are aware all of you all monitor the polyester film business in india for example i right. think you're all aware of that position right 
So in I mean the cyclicity of that market. So that being in the downward in the down cycle now, I think there is a little bit of room available, but those are only tweaking out months out of a of out of a vendor rather than tweaking out years. Okay, understood. Uh, and just lastly, the Chinese uh, manufacturers. do they also source the machinery from the same supplier or they they are largely chinese made machine uh no that i mean the core equipment i think they don't have a choice okay they might take some of the downstream locally now you might choose to have i mean you you there's a lot of downstream equipment to it now you could have lower cost inferior not necessarily inferior also let's say lower cost downstream but when you are aiming for the a super product for a super application we would not uh, cut corners on those surely there are certain things which may be good out of china i mean even some of these big german players etc they have operations in china where they make some of their components that is still chinese although manufactured by them in china so there is but but for the core line there is no chinese alternative Understood. Or any Thank other alternate. Okay, fair point. Thanks. I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question on the line of Gaurav Agarwal from Nine One Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi sir, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, if I may just pass on one feedback. Uh, I've been trying to fix my meeting with you since the last four months. Been in touch with the investor relations agency also. Uh, but sir, somehow I am not able to secure a meeting. Uh, so sir, would be very very grateful if you guys can you know accommodate half an hour kind of a uh, time slot. So Gaurav, Gaurav, let me answer this right away. Yes, I'll ask the Orient Capital to fix a meeting at the first opportunity. The only thing I would like to mention is that yes, we have not been able to meet everybody who wanted to meet us. Fortunately, there have been uh, the interest has been very very strong. that said that said i'm sure you will also appreciate that we spent our time on making sure we were delivering on time rather than you know diverting our attention but yes, sir, sir delhi is the first priority definitely no, no. but just that sir you know if it is possible for you guys then uh, would be definitely no, happy no, to come over i'm i'm coming to a specific where are you based sir i am based very near to i am in gurgaon oh you are in gurgaon i'll tell you what uh some uh, i if you can uh, share your number definitely in the next 10 days we will meet thank you so much sir and uh, you know just a couple of just a couple of hello 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 uh, the person has dropped from the queue sir we will move on to the next question we have the next question line of mr tej patel from nivshai please go ahead Sir, am I audible, sir? Yes. Uh, yes, you are. Yes, yeah. you are. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. So, sir, you know, since in the start of the call, you were discussing about the, you know, the value-added, uh, the value-added films versus, let's say, the films which are used for normal application. And, 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 hello. Hello. Am I audible? Uh, just give us a moment. It seems. Can hear you, but I'm getting. I I think there's some. Yeah. Yeah, now it's okay. So, sir, I was saying, sir, what would be, let's say, in in your previous call, you said the the demand for the dielectric films in India is about fifteen thousand tons, right? So, can you can you, I mean, up, give an approximate between what would be, let's say, the you know high usage of those films, the high end application versus let's say a normal films. Let let me put it to you this way: that is actually extremely sensitive information. from a marketing uh, perspective but uh, let me add to that another rider we sell a film for use by the capacitor manufacturer to make a capacitor when he shares with me the information on his application you will appreciate it's under very strong confidentiality clauses so i cannot actually share my customers information to the public domain so perhaps i'll have to uh, beg to be excused from answering that question okay so no problem and sir uh, you said that our hey, which firm were you from i i missed the name 
Sorry, sir. Tej. Uh, 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 which firm are you from? Nivishai. Nivishai. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sir, and one more question. You said that our line would be come first line would be coming in the third quarter, right? Right. So, so how much uh, utilization do you see for this financial year and for the same line in the next financial year? Okay. Uh, we. I'm not going to hazard a number on that, but I can tell you that startup times and re uh, reaching a high utilization level are not very time consuming. Not that one will be able to produce at 100% on day one. All machines need to be run in. So one will run it slower first. One would run it on easier products first. So those are normal process. But I will not at this time uh, like to make a, a projection on how many tons we would produce in this year. Got it, got it. No problem, sir. And sir, uh, so I got it. You said that, you know, we will start with producing a, a model, you know, six micron film on our newer line too. But then still on an average, how much delta do you expect between the price, uh, between the films you are making on the current line versus uh, the new line? Well, the new line, the new line has a capability to go down till below two micron. So, yeah. if you produce more and more of the thinner films, then that the weighted average price would go downwards. The idea is to cater to thinner films, and the idea is to cater to uh, new applications as they develop. To begin with, it will be a very similar average price. Okay, got it. And sir, uh, when are we expecting our second line to come in the UAE uh, in the next financial year? UAE line will should is uh, targeted for implementation and operation in twenty five twenty six. Tail end, tail end. Third quarter, fourth quarter, uh, third quarter types twenty five twenty six. Oh, seems like the question is at the queue. In the interest of time, this would be our last question. Uh, I would like to hand it over to Mr. Baskar for the closing remarks. Thank you all for joining us. I have noted with actually not too much of happiness the uh, the comment made by one of our participants that if we couldn't schedule a physical meeting, we will correct that and make sure we have a meeting with you also. That said, I would like to once again thank each one of you for joining us today. We at Explore are committed to consistently offer superior quality products backed by exceptional services to exceed customer expectations aimed towards making us an industry leader. That said, we also aim to make sure that we have a, a very open information sharing to the extent permitted by business circumstances with the investor community. So feel free to contact Orient Capital, our, our advisors, and, and our investor relations partners, or any of us. And to the extent we can share information, we most certainly will. Thank you once again. Thank you. On behalf of Expro India Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.